The title of my talk is Inner Alchemy, Immortality, and Apotheosis, Taoist and Western Esoteric Perspectives. During my dissertation research on Taiwan in 1996 to 97, I spent time with members of the Compassion Society, Suhui Tong, a folk Taoist sect that worshiped the Queen Mother of the West, Shi Wang Mu, seen here in the left image, also called Wu Ji Lao Mu, or the Great Old Mother of the Infinite Void. She is seen in Taoist mythology as the patron of the alchemical process of attaining immortality, known as the Golden Elixir, or Jin Dan. The group practiced a variety of folk religious rituals, ranging from spontaneous trance movements, charismatic healing, divination, laying on of hands, pilgrimage, automatic or spirit writing, and observation of key seasonal rituals within the Chinese religious calendar. That said, these outer practices could easily conceal a deeper mystery that only a few of the members actively understood. These practices had at their core the effort to become an immortal, or Cheng Shen, which is central to the Taoist mystical ideal. In Taoist practice, the cultivation of this inner elixir, also called inner alchemy, Nei Dan, is thought to lead to immortality, a state in which the normal human death process has been overcome. To understand this concept of immortality, you have to know a little bit about basic Taoist cosmology. For Taoists, as reality emanates from the primeval void, Wu Ji, into the first unity, Tai Ji, then duality, Yin Yang, the five elements, Wu Xing, and then the 10,000 things, Wa Wei. There is a process of increasing complexification and differentiation into manifest form from the formless void. A human being is a microcosm of this macrocosmic process and consists of three treasures, Sambao. These are Jing, which is bodily essence, associated with sperm, ovum, blood, and bone marrow. It's your little physical vitality. And it's thought you're born with a certain amount of it and you deplete it as you use it over time. Qi, which is a life force associated with breath, and is synonymous with prana in yoga and shun, the awareness and level of one's consciousness seen in how bright one's eyes are. As a person progresses through life, choices made either deplete these three treasures or refine, strengthen, and integrate them. The ultimate goal for an immortal is to alchemically refine and uplift these three treasures in such a way that one overcomes death as we know it. In Chinese mysticism, one has multiple souls called san huan qi po, or three celestial souls and seven bodily souls. The huan or celestial souls are associated with yang and are thought to ascend the sky at the moment of death. The po or earthly souls are yin and are thought tied to one's internal organs, heart, liver, kidneys, gallbladder, etc., and are thought to descend to earth at the moment of death. Death in Taoism then occurs when one has used up one's life essence, Jing, one's energy, Qi, is depleted, and one's consciousness, Shun, can no longer coherently be sustained in a physical body. For many Taoists, unless one does work to actively integrate and refine these three treasures, at the moment of death, one's huan and po are fragmented and recycled in the Tao, and one loses one's sense of individuality. Some see this leading to reincarnation. Others believe you dissolve into nature. What death means in this context either way is depletion, fragmentation, and division, leading to a state of negation of the individual as a sovereign, independent consciousness. <clears throat> Taoists seeking immortality attempt to actively overcome this process by keeping the one, show e through self-cultivation and simplifying and integrating themselves through alchemical work to achieve a state 
of the uncarved block, jianpu, a form of cultivated integrated simplicity. They seek to make themselves into a unified self that sustains consciousness after physical death. Some Taoists even believe one can extend one's physical life indefinitely through alchemical efforts. Regardless, longevity is thought to give one more time to work on oneself and is highly valued even if one doesn't attain physical immortality. <clears throat> one who attains this state of immortality is thought to become a super being who has mastered the elements, attained superpowers, and exists in co-creative spontaneous flow with the universe in a form of effortless action that is playful and incredibly efficacious and potent. These are the Taoist immortals. One of the main things that defines Taoist sectarian groups like Zui Tong is the common practice of spirit writing. This consists of automatic writing on a sand tablet using a stylus called the flying phoenix. Writers go into a trance induced by group chanting and then start scribing characters in the sand that were then interpreted by others around them. These sessions could lead to the creation of detailed texts that broadcast traditional cultural knowledge. These good books, san shu, were a way for the old wine of tradition to be repackaged in new wineskins. One of the main spirit-written channeled books found in Compassion Society temples I visited that was attributed to the Golden Mother was the Golden Mother's Universal Salvation Scripture. This text explains the essential heart of inner alchemy in this pursuit of this golden elixir, and I will quote it at length, followed by some interviews from members of the temple. This medicine is the golden elixir, Jin Dan, from which spirit and emptiness join together to formulate a precious pearl. The golden elixir's mysterious nature is difficult to prove without the practice of meditation. Quietly settling the mind in meditation is the only way for spirit and emptiness to be combined to formulate the golden elixir. Adjust your body's physiology and the attitude of your mind and refine the essence, energy, and spirit, Jing Qi Shan, in quietude. But you cannot just be still without movement. This will cause the blood and energy not to flow smoothly and the body and mind will become restricted. Focus your mind on the lower Dan Tian and the upper Dantian. These are energetic centers, just below the navel and at where we would call the third eye. The Jing Qi and Shun move through the body, but you cannot have movement without stillness. If you just have movement without stillness, then the spirit will leave the essence of emptiness and you cannot formulate the unity of the golden elixir. Maintain and strengthen the original yang energy of the kidney's water and you can introduce the original spirit into the sea of energy at the Dantian. Purify the original yin energy of the heart's fire and use true intention to protect the essence of the mysterious gate in the mind. When the mind's intention becomes unstable and floats away with different thoughts, gently use the heart-mind softness to stop this floating and bring it back to its center. If you can use the will and intention to do what is discussed, then you have achieved a very difficult situation of the free flowing of the elixir, gently stoking the energy to flow upwards along the spine to the head, and then flowing gently back forward down towards the feet. This circle is not forced like flowing water. Don't use force. This is the way of effortless action. Allow the original yang and true yin to mutually combine and unite in the heavenly palace. This great work defeats all negativity and heaviness of greed in the mind. Use this training of the spiritual emptiness to make the golden elixir. Use the mild fire to boil and the strong fire to roast with such a bright, hot intensity that it formulates a precious pearl. If you maintain this kind of intention, the original emptiness will gradually develop to its fullness. Time will go by and spirit will become unified with emptiness and a spiritual baby will be conceived within one's being. This immortal child cannot be harmed by the torrents of flooding waters or the raging of fires and can gradually have access to the ultimate limitless, limitless paradise of the Jasper Pool. What is channeled in this text above is known in Taoist alchemy as the alchemy of Khan and Li, fire and water, 
associated with respective hexagrams in the I Ching. In Taoist inner alchemy, one uses the mind's intention, Yi, focused on the lower Dantian, Sha Dantian, an energy center just below the navel, to generate heat and fire that is thought to steam up to the kidneys and boil like a cauldron. And this energy, activating the Jing in the kidneys, rises up to the heart. One then gradually cultivates and circulates the energy between the cauldron at the navel and the heart along the microcosmic orbit thought to run up along the back, around in a circle, down the front. Cultivating an inner child, in, uh, cultivating an inner child of consciousness and energy that eventually one then pulls up the central channel, Zhong Mai, similar to the Shushumna within Kundalini Yoga. Having done this over time, one projects this immortal child or immortal fetus out one's Bai Hui or crown chakra, similar to Kundalini rising out the crown in Kundalini Yoga. For members, the Jasper Pool represents a state of paradise where one has attained multidimensional consciousness beyond space, time, duality, and all the limits of the mortal condition. Here, with this elaborated, expanded, multidimensional consciousness, one exists as an immortal, a godlike being who playfully and spontaneously co-creates with the Tao from a place of power, equanimity, and joy. A member of the main temple, Dr. Liao, is a professor of chemistry and material science at the university in Taidong. He elaborated on this concept of the golden elixir found in this channel text from his own experience. He said, Zihui Tang concerns itself with the unification of heaven and man, Tian Ren He Yi, through the cultivation of the golden elixir, Jin Dan. This golden elixir has to do with the body's energy, qi, and intention, yi. We cultivate the three treasures, you know, jing, essence, energy, qi, and spirit, shen. This is called inner work, nei gong. Use your mind to control your three treasures and you circulate your microcosmic orbit, ren du ar mai. When all of your channels are open, then you can communicate with the universe, tong, you can live a long life. Another of Songshan's teachers, temporal brother Ji, a PhD biologist at the prestigious academic of Seneca, regularly taught Qigong or energy work to Songshan temple members early in the morning. He shared his perspective on the golden elixir. Our method is to train ourselves and train our bodies first. We wanna train our energy and then help people heal. This is called elixir cauldron school. The goal is the same, to cultivate energy, essence, and spirit or consciousness. Most people don't understand, and those that do often don't talk about it, and even fewer actively practice it. But that is why we teach Qigong, because you can feel it. Your body becomes very sensitive, and you can know all the changes around you. You can feel your microcosmic orbit opening. We have the central channel, right? From the perineum, Hui in, to the crown, Bai Hui. This is called the central channel, Zhong Mai. Now in Tantric Buddhism, they focus on raising energy in the central channel only. Those that do the microcosmic orbit in the, elixir, in the elixir cauldron school, we open all of the channels and circulate the energy throughout the body. This is called cultivating the diamond body, jenggang ti. The body is just the foundation. This is the first stage. After you have circulated and opened the channels, that's called entering the gate, ruman. Opening the central channel is faster. You focus inside, and after you have gathered a lot of hot chi at the level of the Lord Dantian, you take your chi and you guide it up the center, and it will raise upward. After a while, your spirit will be in contact with the universe. We call this union of man and heaven, Tian Ren He Yi. When your energy field increases, it's like the expansion of a coherent electromagnetic field. I then asked him how this differs from the Buddhist idea of liberation, Jia Tuo. Liberation is a Buddhist word. We don't speak of liberation in Taoism. We say becoming an immortal, Zheng Shen. If you attain a high enough level, your body will become very light, very bright, and it will, it will ascend up to heaven. If we practice long enough, hard enough, we become like Jesus or like Buddha, 
The purpose is to open all of your channels for the qi to flow smoothly, so you have to have a method like qigong. Now, when you cultivate to a high level, your body has this energy field. Once you reach a certain level, you can transfer your body and your energy into the universe. Through the cultivation of these three treasures, sambal, at energetic centers, and the opening of energetic channels, a person was thought able to increase their health, extend their lifespan, and ultimately unite themselves with the Tao as a godlike being similar to Buddha, Jesus, or other so-called mass ascended masters. These immortals were thought to have become more than human and beyond the opposites of life and death. Here, the gradual effort of self-cultivation is meant to expand the boundaries of self and transcend the limited horizons of the individual beyond our concept of mortality. The basic stages of inner alchemy have been popularized by recent authors like Montauk Chia, but have themselves been around long before his New Age appropriation as seen in the channel text above. These steps are one, cultivate and refine one's body essence jing through purification, physical exercise, diet, and the consumption of various medicinal herbs conjoined with the preservation of sexual energy through the non or limited emission of bodily fluids during sex. Two, the cultivation, refinement, and circulation of energy through qigong, tai chi, and meditative breath work meant to move the life force through these various channels while expanding and strengthening this energy and opening these channels to a greater degree while removing blockages. Three, the gradual expansion, elevation, and refinement and integration of one's subtle body and conscious, consciousness into a, bundle, into a bundle of energy and awareness that starts to cohere. And four, the gradual development of an immortal fetus within oneself thought to be able to shoot out one's Bai Hui or crown chakra, helping one attain multidimensional non-dual consciousness that transcends limits of space, time, and duality and enables one to perform mystical feats beyond the imagination. This ethno-ontology expressed above is in sharp, stark contrast to notions of death presented in mainstream religious frameworks in the West. There is no simple notion of the soul or that one's self is cohesive in an afterlife, good or bad. One is thought to have to do active work on oneself to overcome fragmentation and maintain self-cohesion of consciousness. One has to dig into Western esoteric ideas to find parallels. Similar to the Taoist ideas above, the great work is defined in Western esotericism as the effort to refine, integrate, and evolve the individual through rigorous spiritual self-discipline over time. <clears throat> Girjif, a Western esoteric teacher, for instance, presented the notion that most humans are robotic bundles of habits and lack a sovereign independent consciousness. He believed one had to apply a rigorous effort on oneself over time via his fourth way that created an independent consciousness that potentially could outlast death. For Girjif, most people would simply be, quote, food for the moon at the moment of death, which meant for him that the individual would be consumed by higher astral forces, falling into a fragmented and dispersed unconscious state, similar to the Taoist narrative of being recycled in the Tao above. Alistair Crowley, in his mystical and magical system of Thelema, presents a similar idea. He said, the majority of the people in this world are ataxic. They cannot coordinate their mental muscles to make a purposeful movement. They have no real will, only a set of wishes, many of which contradict others. The victim wobbles from one to the other, and it is no less wobbling because the movements may occasionally be very violent. And at the end of life, the movements cancel each other out. Nothing has been achieved except the one thing of which the victim is not conscious, the destruction of his own character, the confirmation of indecision. Such a one is torn limb from limb by Karanazan. Karanzan, in Crowley's system, is the force of dispersion and fragmentation, similar to the Taoist idea above of being recycled in the Tao. Similar to Taoist ideas, Crowley defines the great work as the uniting of opposites. It may mean the uniting of the soul with God, of the microcosm with the macrocosm, of the female with the male, of the ego with the non-ego. In the great work proposed by Crowley through combination of yoga, meditation, and ceremonial magic, one works to gradually refine and master the self, balancing and equilibrating inner forces, and then eventually attaining 
knowledge and conversation with one's holy guardian angel. Here, one is thought to attain direct communication with a higher genius or guide, similar to the Greek notion of the daemon, or guiding intermediate spirit, that spoke to Socrates. This leads one to knowing and doing of one's true will, which is essentially one's fundamental purpose for being in this life and potentially others. Crowley saw this as every true will having a unique orbit like stars in the universe, and that this true will potentially outlasted death. In the Gnostic Creed, a central part of Lima's key ritual, the Gnostic Mass, this is affirmed, and I confess my life, one, individual, and eternal, that was and is and is to come. A similar idea is found in Taoist mysticism. Here, the idea is that every person is given a fun or a portion of the Tao, which is essentially one's individualized right course of life in harmony with it. This notion is also very similar to the notion of one's individual dharma and yogic thought, which aligns oneself with divine right order, or ritta. Over time, having mastered expression of the true will and the practices of yoga and ceremonial magic, one attains a, st a state of mastery that can only be further cemented by casting oneself into the womb of Babylon or the void, to be reborn as a perfect vehicle of the divine on earth as a master of the temple. Here, having attained a state of elevated apotheosis or div divination, one eventually becoming divine, one eventually becomes an ipsismus or the most self-same. One becomes a fully realized, unique, distinct, and powerful godlike being on earth. Though the language is different, the essential ideas bear a marked family resemblance to the practice of inner alchemy in Taoism and the attainment of the estate of becoming an immortal, Cheng Shen. Interestingly, both the Taoist process of becoming an immortal and the Western approach to the great work is associated with mountains. The Chinese character for immortal consists of the radical for person at the left and the mountain at the right implying immortals dwell high above the petty concerns of everyday man. Like the Nietzschean Ubermensch, their goals and position is lofty above the petty dualistic concerns in the villages below them. This association also speaks to the closeness of the immortal to nature and the sun, mountains being the closest to the sun and deeply woven into the wilderness. In the West, Adepts also dwell upon mountains. The name for the mountain of initiation in the Rosicrucian tradition is Mons Ebiegnus. Here, high above the concerns of the mundane world, adepts guide those below, but always from the place and perspective of the transcendent above. What all these ideas have in common, whether east or west, is that death is a form of incoherent entropy whereby the physical, energetic, and conscious facets of the self are fragmented at the moment of death. What Western esotericism has in common with Taoist practices is an active, active effort to foster a neg entropic coherent integration of the self raised to a peak of conscious and energy apotheosis, or becoming divine, beyond the limits of the everyday human condition. Ultimately, the end goal is a perfected godlike individual that rises above the duality of life and the human condition and masters reality instead of trying to escape it. This notion of apotheosis is a rarefied idea and breaks against notions of simple surrender to death. One is encouraged to undertake an active effort working on oneself to master the duality of life and all of its conditions into a higher order unity of cohesive force. These ideas might be conceptual silicone, or they might be something worth paying more attention to. Regardless, the ideas presented above are rare and speak to the necessity of great self-discipline and great effort to attain such a state of mastery. For that reason alone, they will likely remain on the margins for the vast amount of humanity. One final note, it's set on the path of self-cultivation and the great work, synchronicities abound. 
I had a very unforeseen encounter with members of the Songshan Temple I lived with in 1996-97 at the center of Burning Man in 2004. The long serpentine tendrils of fate that led me there 17 years later can only be represented by the Chinese word yuan fun, which speaks to patterns of fate and destiny that unite people. On the path of the great work, one hopefully moves from the patterns of faded and fragmented limit associated with karma to the possibilities and open creativity of destiny associated with dharma or the true will. But that's a story for another time. Thank you. <laughs>